the purpose of this video is to touch on two things. The first thing is this one, all right, multiple uh, dyadic product. This one, all right. We say that we don't know what the hell is it going on, all right. We just skip, all right. Then next, we actually um, briefly talk about deriving this and this, but we didn't actually um, somewhat talk about how do we derive that. Alright, so I'm just gonna touch up on these two things. So if you still remember your your um your string displacement matrix for a beam is d two n d x one square, right? And then you can rewrite it as this thing. We have we have told you that. And then this thing over here is actually your one over j square, right? And therefore it is being uh, translated over here, yeah. over here. Well, this thing over here is d two n d c square, which is this one. While your n is a shape functions, right? So your shape functions, if you remember back, which is this one, I'll just copy this this uh, c function. I'll just paste it over here, right? So these are all of my shape functions in terms of the c, right? So it's just over here, okay? So I'm gonna sub in my n as all this thing in terms of a matrix, right? Okay. So therefore, what does this mean? Is how do we um, take this in order to derive this? Okay, so therefore let's let's just briefly go through. I'll just multiply in the the one quarter first, and therefore I have this right two over four minus three c over four. So this thing over here, I just simply rewrite as this. While well, I'm multiplying the one quarter through everything, okay. Then I differentiate in terms of c, right? This is the tell us to differentiate two times because this is the two. If I were to differentiate two times, you know that one time this one will becomes three c. I mean three minus three quarter. If it's second time, this one becomes zero. This one definitely over here is already zero. So therefore, so therefore, if you differentiate two times of this, you're getting six c over four. Okay. So for this thing over here, when I differentiate two times, I'll get six c over four. Okay. Next, I'll just bring this thing over here at least for pause a while first. All right. And I remove this one. Okay. And I'm gonna I'm gonna differentiate the rest. And I'm gonna tell you why is the result. All right. For well, this one, I would have minus 2L plus 6C at, which is this one. If I differentiate two times, I will have this one. Alright, you can do it on your own because I just want to quickly go through with, uh, with this. Alright, so let's go on with the differentiation. You're going to differentiate two times. And just repeat again because this, this is telling us to be, this is D2 over DC squared. So therefore, you need to differentiate two times. Alright, this is just the meaning of that. Alright, so you, I, I'll just continue with that. Alright. And you may wonder why am I having minus two L plus six C L, alright? Because I have a class kind of mistake, <laughs> so it should be over eight. Okay, I actually forgot to do that, alright? So I'll just simply paste it over here, okay? While the this one over here is the third one, okay? Which is this one is this one over here, okay? If if I differentiate two times, same thing now I got to differentiate two times for this thing, alright? So now we have this thing over here, all right. Now we're gonna factorize out the four because we see that there's one quarter over here. We can have we can actually factorize out the one quarter. So if I were to factorize out one quarter over here, I'll simply remove all the quarter. All right. So what I have is my um, let's do it together. All right. You remove this thing. All right. This thing I'll change to two right because it's it's um eight divided by four is actually two. Right, because at first it's eight, then I factorize out the one quarter. I'll have two over here. So two times eight is eight. I mean two times four is eight. All right. Then I'm gonna remove this one also. I'm gonna remove. And I'm gonna change to this this eight over here. If I factorize out four, I'll have also two. Okay. So what I have is one well, is this also. Okay. So if I were to cancel out minus minus, all right, this one becomes three. I cancel off. I cancel off. This one will become three also. What I will have is I should also show you at least it's more clearer for you to see. So I'll just simply cancel off all the all the stuff so that in the end you'll get to see where am I deriving. Alright. And then uh yeah. Okay, wow. Well, anyway, yeah. So this thing over here is my my B. Alright, my 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 string displacement matrix. I mean, string displacement vector, la, I would say. One quarter this thing. Alright. So, as you can see, this one is very similar to, to this one. If I were to copy this thing, 
I'm gonna paste it over here it's the same thing right you just double check this is 6c 6c this is minus l plus 3lc plus 3lc the rest I think I don't need to explain all right so I have b over here equals to one quarter so I, I, I think I can rewrite this in a, in a more later way so give me a while all right but however you need don't forget that you have a 1 over j square over here okay so you have a 1 over j square over here back at the back all right so this is your b right so don't forget that okay so maybe I just I should be bringing it over this side okay at least it's, it's better for you to see all right so now this is b all right and based on this formula we have a b transpose right this is b this is b transpose okay so if I were to dyadic this thing over here you give me a while I'll just simply write them out all together again all right hold on a while so if I were to transpose this thing all right I have this thing over here okay and you know that for maybe I should cancel off this already because this is just simply that b equals to something so to, to be more exact for you to, to, to visualize this thing is your b and this thing over here is your b transpose okay or your d can be all the way outside all right over here and you have some in the gray all right so I'm just simply rewriting uh, this form sorry this form into here all right and later on we're going to prove to you that this thing is is coming from here all right at least you get to see it's coming but however later on there's one key important concept that i just want to convey for deriving that all right that is the dyadic product that is the rule of the dyadic product okay so for example i have a all right with a certain vector b all right dyadic with uh, c with a certain vector d all right if that's dyadic product what you can do is to um, bring the constants out all right so i have ac all right b dyadic d okay you get what i mean so i'm just simply shifting this c out of the its constant then i just simply bring this in so the dyadic they, they also have their own world or the constants are of their own world all right as, as you can see this is the same thing all right so therefore what we can do now is the same thing we're gonna take out this thing and I'm gonna bring him outside all right so allow me to, to rearrange stuff because it's, it's kind of packed over here so I'll just simply remove this one first all right just for the sake of uh, showing you stuff all right so I have uh, when I remove all this I have this constant I'll just bring it outside okay and then I'll just bring this thing over here okay so this constant over here, if I were to multiply all together, what I have, I have one over sixteen, j four, right? Because j squared, one over j squared times one over j squared is j four, and then one quarter times one quarter is one over sixteen, all right? So I can simply remove this thing, and I just simply put it over here, okay? And we are almost there. The only key thing is that we actually transform dx one equals to j dc, right? Because of this formula j, the Jacobian. So, Jab so DC Jacobian is equals to DX1. You just bring this thing upwards to this side, right? So therefore, DX1 is equals to DCJ. So therefore, this thing over here is simply the relationship of replacing DX1 with JDC. So if if that's the case that happens, then I will have a um, DC over here. Since we know that this this is at first DX, now I change to DC. Well, the J, I'll just simply put it over here. All right, because I think you get what I mean. So, if I were to cancel, I have cube over here, and then integrating. All right, don't forget just now we have a D also, right? The, the. This one, all right. The E I, D equals to E I, and therefore this thing over here is simply the, the D. So if I were to to cancel off whatever thing that we need to cancel. All right, just to make things neater, and then take this thing, and then put it all over here, and you can start to compare. In fact, we are the same. All right, except this one you're gonna integrate in terms of the the lambda domain. All right, the lambda length. So you just compare and compare, and compare and compare. It's all the same thing. All right, this is d over sixteen j cube. All right. Next is that we're gonna multiply this thing with this thing. All right and then multiply 
this thing with this thing is just a matrix multiplication. So 6c multiplied with 6c, you have 36c square. Or 6c minus this thing, you have this thing over here, and blah blah blah. Okay. Same thing for the for the next row. If you were to do the same thing, you're gonna have all this thing over here. It's a it's a tedious process, but just take it. All right. And then take note of the key understanding is that you're gonna integrate them. This is the integration. Be 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 reminded very carefully. All right. So therefore, if you were to integrate this thing over here, for example, because over here there's no integration. Where's the integration? It's gone, right? So you're gonna integrate. So 36 c squared. If you were to integrate, you're just getting back. Um, 36 over 3, alright, c cubed. Uh, because if it's, I think you get what I mean, it's, it's just an <laughs> integration. So square, you have becomes cubed. So you have to divide it by, by its number over here. Alright, so it's just simply uh, like a m plus 1 divided by m plus 1. This is the integration. Alright, just, just digest it. It's just integration. Alright, so, but anyway, this is this thing. And if you were to 36 divided by 3, you have 12. So it's 12 c cubed. Same thing, you're going to integrate the rest of this. Blah, 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 blah. Alright, so therefore, this is just a, a key concept I want to convey over here. And the next thing you need to do is to take the definite integral from plus 1 to minus 1. Alright, if you were to integration. Because we are operating in the c domain. Alright, the c domain is dealing with, maybe I should show you the diagram. It's dealing with this thing over here. Alright, c is equals to minus one and c is equals to one. Alright, which is different from the, the the time where you do your shift functions for when it is uh when it is equals to one over this is not one no two or yeah. After which uh this is in the x domain or whatsoever. So this is totally different, alright? This is just c equals to minus one and c plus one. Alright, previously was from zero to, to length L of the of the beam itself. Alright, so it's from 0 to length L for the for the X system. For the C system, you're going to be negative 1 and plus 1. Alright, so since we know that we are in the C system, or you can call this the curl C, curl, curl C or whatever, but anyway. So you have this this whole chunk over here is the big matrix. Alright, this matrix comes from this thing, uh, dyadic product with this thing. Okay, if, if that doesn't seems to show you much all right so this this part over here we we derive already and then you integrate all right in terms of of um from one from minus one to one all right and then after that this it's, it's just this so you are gonna you're gonna have uh, expand this this definite integral over here plus one and minus one so therefore what we have is <coughs> this section over here is the plus one this section over here is the minus one, all right. When when you sub in into this this matrix over here, so it's a very tedious process, but at least you 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 somehow get to know know it, okay. And therefore, this thing over here minus away this thing, all right. Twelve minus minus twelve, you have twenty four, all right. Three L minus minus nine L, you have twelve L. Things like that. So you form this matrix over here, okay. And then after that, you factorize out their common term. Their common term is actually 4. Alright. So, you we will have, um, if I were to factorize out this thing, maybe I should bring this thing out, out here first, and then I'll copy this thing. You get, you'll get what I mean, alright. So, if I were to factorize out the 4, alright, 24 and 12, everything I'll have, uh, I'll factorize out 4 over here, so 6 times 4 is 24, right? So I'll just factorize out the 4 already. So 4 divided by 2 is actually 2. And therefore, this 2D over L cube is your 2D over L cube over here. Okay? So therefore, this is just how I derive this thing. Okay? So and therefore, this is your um, your stiffness matrix. Alright, for your beam. Okay? And you may wonder, normally your beam stiffness matrix is all this 12 EI, 6 EI minus 12. Then why come is 6, 3 and this thing? Because if you were to multiply this thing inside, you will have this thing over here. Alright, so it's, for example, 2, you know that D is actually EI, alright? Young modulus times your second moment of area. So 2 EI times 6 is actually 12 EI over L cube, alright? And then 2 EI L over L cube times 3 L, you have 6 EI 
Alright, this L and this L will cancel. You have L square, which is L square over here. Alright, just zoom in for you. Okay, this is the L square over here. So therefore, the the rest I think you get you, you get to know. So therefore, we can re-represent all of our like F equals to K U. Alright, as this thing over here. So your K is your beam stiffness matrix, and we have proved to do that. Uh, in the next video, we will briefly go through an uh, another method. To, to derive this k, alright, it's, it's actually not the it's, it's actually not the, the other method, but rather than um, we are using the different shape functions. Alright, previously we used in in terms of the c domain. Alright, this c. So later on we are gonna use the um, what's that called the the x domain um, thing to to somewhat show you. Alright, and I shall see you there.